Good morning. Welcome to Bethany Lutheran in Warren, Oregon. We're continuing our march through the book of Mark. We are on chapter 10, verses 46 through 52, which read, They came to Jericho. As he and his disciples and a large crowd were leaving Jericho, Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the roadside. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many sternly ordered him to be quiet, but he cried out even more loudly, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and said, call him here. And they called the blind man saying to him, take heart, get up, he is calling you. So throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. Then Jesus said to him, what do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, my teacher, let me see again. Jesus said to him, go, your faith has made you well. Immediately he regained his sight and followed him on the way. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O God, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Pastor Stephen Elberton told the following story. He said, in my church's secretary's office, there hangs a modernistic picture composed of a maze of colors and shapes. I realized these sophisticated, modern, and abstract pictures were supposed to contain some profound artistic or philosophical message, but I never was able to figure it out. It just looked like a jumbled mass of confusion. If there was a message there, I was blind to it. One day, while I was standing in the office waiting for the copier to warm up, one of the congregation's kindergarten-age boys, Adam, stood beside me and said, Do you see what I see? Do you see something in that picture? I sure don't. Adam looked at me with glee in his eye. Pastor, can't you see him? It's Jesus hanging on the cross. I stared as hard as I could until my eyes actually hurt from staring. I wanted to believe Adam and that there actually was the image of Jesus hanging on the cross hidden somewhere in that mass of color and shapes, but I could not see Jesus anywhere. Adam, I'm sorry, I must be blind. You will have to help me see. Directing his finger to a mass of color in the center of the picture, Adam said, There, Pastor, do you see what I see? There is Jesus, his face, his arms outstretched on the cross. And then, like an epiphany, the image began to appear. Yes, there, hidden somewhere behind the colors and shapes, was the barely visible image of Jesus arms outstretched hanging on the cross. It's amazing, Adam. You have helped one blind pastor to see Jesus. Yes, I can see what you see, Adam. Our gospel text today is about seeing what others cannot. At the time of today's gospel text, Jesus is almost to the end of his journey to Jerusalem. The next chapter of Mark is about the Palm Sunday entry into the city. It's the culmination of Jesus' three years of ministry, and still people do not see Jesus for whom he is. A few verses earlier, we read of Jesus' third prediction of his imminent, painful, and humiliating death. The response from brothers James and John is to ask Jesus for places of honor beside him when he receives his glory in heaven. A few verses before that, we read of the rich young ruler who did not follow Jesus 
because he could not part with his wealth of possessions when Jesus asked him to do so. He could not see the riches found only in a faith in Christ. Now we have Bartimaeus, a blind beggar sitting by the road. When he hears Jesus of Nazareth is passing by, he cries out to him for mercy. He's told to be quiet, but he calls out all the more, pleading for mercy. When Jesus responds to the pleas of Bartimaeus, the blind beggar throws off his cloak and runs to Jesus. Jesus asks Bartimaeus what he wants from him, and the blind beggar says, Rabbi, I want to see. Now remember, if there is a detail added in the scripture, it's there for a reason. We're told Bartimaeus throws off his cloak and runs to Jesus. Most likely, that cloak was all that the blind beggar possessed. Yet he casts it off so that nothing will hinder him in reaching Jesus. Jesus is all he needs. The 12 disciples are denying Jesus' mission and vying for power. The young rich man chooses his wealth rather than answering Jesus' call to give it all away and follow him. Now we have Bartimaeus joyfully following Jesus into Jerusalem to face his death. The truth has set him free, and he chooses to be free indeed. He asked for nothing more than that Jesus would have mercy on him. The word mercy in Greek is eleison. Each week we call out, Lord have mercy, in the Kyrie Eleison part of our liturgy. Those in the crowd around Jesus tell Bartimaeus to shut up. They do not want the unseemly cries of a beggar to disturb this dignitary. Nothing has changed. Today there is tremendous social pressure to stifle the cries of human pain and neediness. Society prefers for the poor and homeless to remain invisible and nameless. When people sink deeply into grief, they often hear the message, get over it. When victims cry out for justice, they're often told to just plead guilty to a lesser crime and move on. When people commit crimes and seek mercy to rebuild their lives, Society wants to lock them out. There is no mercy for a second chance. But Jesus' ears are fine-tuned to hear the Kyrie eleison whenever and wherever it is voiced. You know, we are all beggars. We have no claim on Jesus other than that we are in desperate need for his mercy because his mercy is the key to eternal life in the house of the Lord. We call upon the Lord often, but what is it that we call for? Is it for admiration and influence? Is it for power or possessions? Is it for him to see how devoted we are? Pleading for mercy is the only claim we have on Jesus. And Jesus will always respond to our cry for mercy. And then he adds blessings as well. We must never be hesitant to cry out for mercy. Remember the friends who cut a hole in the roof of a house to lower their crippled friend down to Jesus to plead for mercy. And Jesus healed him. Remember the unclean woman who reached out just to touch Jesus' robe, silently crying out for mercy. Jesus heard her and had mercy. We've heard about Jairus who fell at Jesus' feet and pleaded for mercy for his dying daughter, and Jesus healed her. These people of faith did not let buildings, social mores, religious customs, or crowds keep them from pursuing Jesus' mercy. 
What keeps you from complete freedom in Christ? Are there parts of scripture you cannot quite believe? Lord, have mercy on me. Is there some past sin you think is too much for Christ to forgive? Is there an ongoing sin that you find too hard to give up? Lord, have mercy on me. Is there someone you find too difficult to love or some wrong you find too painful to forgive? Lord, have mercy on me. It does not matter what the sin was, how guilty you are or you think you are, how long you have carried your burden, Christ has set you free. Yes, Christ has already set you free. He did that on a cross over 2,000 years ago. But you have to accept the freedom. Call out to Jesus today. Lay your burden at his feet today. In your guilt, in your neediness, in your physical and spiritual weakness, say, Lord, have mercy on me. And the mercy is yours. In Christ, all the rules change. You are no longer blind or crippled or guilty or dirty. You are forgiven. You are free. You are free from regret. You are free from your past. You are free from self-limitation. You are free from fear. You are free from old hurts and mistakes. You are renamed child of God. Yes, mercy me, I am free. Say it, mercy me, I am free. Amen.